Okay, hi there, welcome. Let's look at a question which tries to encourage you to use some synoptic economics in your answer. Synoptic, of course, means the whole, finding the different connections between different parts of the course. And we're going to take a question which looks at labour migration, the economic effects of a fall in the scale of migration flows. Here's our question. Uh, it's based on this chart. Evaluate the likely micro and macroeconomic effects of a sustained fall in labour migration, inward migration, into the UK. The chart on the left shows three flows. The blue chart shows the number of people coming into the UK uh, per quarter of the year. And you can see that was rising substantially through to about the middle of 2015, 2016, and now started to diminish. It's just under 600,000 people a year. The orange line shows people leaving the UK, emigration, and that figure was gently falling in recent times, but now back rising again, about 350,000 people on average per year. The net figure, of course, is inflows. The blue line minus the orange line shows the net migration, which peaked at just over 300,000 people on an annualised basis, is now down closer towards 200,000. So it looks as if in the last couple of years there has been a decline in the scale of inward migration into the UK. Indeed, if we look at the latest figures, uh, the number of EU citizens leaving the UK post-Brexit vote, I suppose, with a, a delay is now the highest it's been for 10 years. And uh, by some estimates, the, the number of Eastern European nationals living and working in the UK has fallen by, by 5%. People from Poland, for example, or people from the Baltic states, Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia. So this is a topical issue and we're asked to think about the micro and macro macroeconomic effects. The advice I always give to my students is to try to make your point at the start of a paragraph really clear. So the more precision you can use, the better, rather than making a kind of vague assertion, it's best to focus on the specific effect. So here are three possible micro effects. And again, there's always uncertainty. Your micro impacts might focus, first of all, on business costs. So, for example, if the scale of labour migration goes down, fewer people coming into the labour market, that in theory could cause a shrinkage in the active supply of labour to certain occupations, to certain industries. And that could then lead to rising wage or labour costs, particularly if there are shortages of skilled workers. A good answer would identify the sectors likely to be most affected by this. For example, catering, farming, caring, construction would be good industries to choose. So maybe business costs would go up and then build your chain of reasoning to talk about the impact on variable cost, impact on profitability. Uh, of businesses seem to be scrambling around to find the best workers. That challenge will get harder if there's less migration coming in. A second micro point could be to consider the impact on the housing market. And that's both house prices, if you want to buy a house, but crucially also the cost of rented housing. Most migrant workers tend to rent property. So if there's a fall in migration, there'll be a slowdown in population growth. The key issue there is whether that's going to make renting more affordable. Is that going to bring down the average level of house prices, both to buy and also the cost of renting? Again, you could build some theory into that and then start to evaluate the extent to which that's going to happen. Of course, crucially, for example, it depends on the rate of house building, not just housing demand, but housing supply. What about the impact on consumer prices, the prices faced by households? Some prices may go up. For example, if, if the farming industry has higher labour costs, the costs of fruit picking and food processing go up, then you might expect to see higher prices in the shops. Build your evaluation. Consider the impact, for example, on poorer families if there's an increase in food prices. What about care homes who typically rely heavily on migrant workers? How are they going to cope if they can't attract the workers they need? Their costs may have to go up, so we may end up paying higher fees for care. Uh, some indeed may close. The market may become less, less competitive. But crucially, pick out some microeconomic factors impact on individual businesses, sectors, industries and households. Macroeconomics. Well, macro effects can... Of course, you've got a much bigger canvas to write about. So much more you can discuss. I've picked out three for you here, for example. If there's a fall in migration, what will be the possible consequences for the unemployment rate? We have unemployment at the moment of 4.2%. How much further 
Can it fall? Would it go any lower if migration flows fell? Would there be an expansion of domestic workers as migrant workers are replaced? Or will the fall in migration inflows actually cause a slower rate of growth and a, a lower level of aggregate demand for goods and services? There's a lot of uncertainty, of course. A macro point would be to think about the impact on government finances. So, for example, what, what might happen to the budget deficit and the national debt if there's a slowdown, a slowdown in migration? Key question to ask there is whether migrant workers and their families, are they net contributors to the Treasury? Do they pay more in tax, income tax, national insurance, VAT and so on, than they take out in welfare benefits? The evidence suggests that migrants tend to be younger and better qualified and more chance of being in work when they come to the UK and therefore migrants tend to make a net contribution to the UK Treasury. What about the NHS? If the NHS finds it tougher to employ the midwives, the porters, the nurses, the care staff, will it need to uh, get an increase in budget in order to deliver public services and will that affect taxpayers as a whole? A much wider question would be to think about the impact of a fall in migration on the overall competitiveness of the economy. What will affect what will the effect of less migration be on, on productivity, for example? Uh, particularly if we get fewer, younger, highly qualified workers coming in. What about a fall in entrepreneurship, perhaps? People who have particular skills who want to come and live and work in the UK. Or will UK firms respond? Will UK firms take up the challenge of there being a smaller inflow of migrant workers and perhaps increase their own spending on internships, on apprenticeships, to improve the stock of human capital of domestic workers? All of these things, of course, are couched in uncertainty. We can't be sure what the consequences will be, but if you make a precise point, that really does help your evaluation. First of all, your analysis, your chain of reasoning, and then it does invite good evaluation. I've shown you a chart. Oftentimes, of course, there'll be an extract which you can go to to pick out some points to add into your answer and get some application marks. OK, hopefully this has been a useful video in terms of picking out the synoptic aspect of a topic. So labour migration is one of those issues which has both a microeconomic and a macroeconomic dimension. Thank you.